Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our TV classroom. I'm Miss Austin, and I teach at Indian Springs Elementary School. Before we begin, I just want to say to you from all of your teachers, principals, and all of the school staff that we miss you guys so much, and we cannot wait till we all are back together again. So let's get started with our learning. Today, we're going to be talking about Magic E, applying what we know about Magic E to decode words, and we will answer and ask questions about details in the text. All right, before we left in third quarter, you remember we started talking about magic E, and we know that magic E sits at the end of words. It does not make a sound, but it gives the power to the first vowel to say its name. We know in CVC words, that last consonant closes the door on a vowel so it can only make its short sound. So let's look at this word. Here, I have the word pen. I can't say its name because the N closes the door on I. But look, magic E comes along and turns pin into pine. Let's look at another one. Here, T closes the door on the letter A, so A cannot say its name. Instead, it makes its short vowel sound. So this word is mat. Magic E comes along, closes opens the door so A can say its name, and now we have the word mate. So remember, whenever you see magic E at the end of a word, it's going to give the power to the vowel to say its name. Let's read some more words with magic E. Okay, so when you look at words, I want you to always look and see what you know. So when I look at all of these words, I see they all have an E at the end. So that means magic E is giving the power to these vowels. So in this word, I see the letter A. It gets to say its name. Let's sound this word out. Plain. A said its name, plain. The next word, magic E is giving the vowel to the letter I to say its name. So this word is bike, bike. And this word, Magic E gives the power to O to say its name. So the word is bone, bone. You hear the vowel sound, say its name. In this word, magic E gives the vowel, the power, I'm sorry, to the first word letter to say its name. So the E gets to say its name. This word is peat, peat. So again, remember, magic E says, allows the vowel to say its name. Now, if you notice, I have words with letter A, I, O, and E. There's a vowel missing, isn't it? Can you guess which vowel it is? That's right, it is the vowel U. We save U for last because magic E does something really special with the letter U. It gets to make two sounds. Magic E with U can say U like in mule, or it can say OO like in tube. Let's read some words with magic E and U. Whenever we're reading, I want you to always try the vowel name first. So when I sound these words out, I'm going to say U when I see magic E. So let's do the first one. Here I see magic E is going to give the letter U its power. Sound this word out, cute, cute. So in this word, U says its name. Let's try another one. Again, magic E gives U a power. Mute, mute. In this word, again, U gets to say its name. Let's try some more. Remember, always start with the vowel name. Magic E gives U the power. Perune, perune. Mmm. You isn't allowing me to make a word. So now I'm going to try the next sound that magic E gives you, which is ooh. Prune, prune. Good job. The next word, magic E gives you the, the power. Let's try it with you. Ryud, ryud. Mmm, it's not allowing me to make a real word. Let's try the next sound of ooh. Rude, rude. Good job. 
Let's read the words together. Cute, mute, prune, rude. You notice in these words, the vowel sound was ooh. All right, let's try dictation. Whenever we do dictation, that's where you write the sounds that you hear. I'm gonna say a word and we're going to write the sound, the letters that make that sound. My first word is use, use. Let's say the sounds we hear in use. Use, I hear you. If I hear you, then I know there must be a magic E. Use, don't forget that magic E because if you do, it changes your word. If I don't write magic E here, this word is us and that's not the word I said. I said use. So what's gonna open the door to let you say its name? That's right, magic E. Let's try another one. Listen to my word, flute, flute. Let's say the sounds we hear in flute. Full oot. I know that magic E allows the letter U to say oo. Let's write the sounds we hear. Full oot. Again, we need magic E to make sure that U is saying its oo sound. And we have flute. Let's read our words. Use flute. Good job. Now let's read with magic E. Look at my sentence. Let's read it together. I used to play the flute. Good job. This week you will be working with magic E. I challenge you to um, on your lesson to find words with magic E, read them and try dictating and spelling some words with magic E using your sounds. Now we're gonna talk about our comprehension skill. This week you're gonna be working with asking and answering questions about key details in a text. Asking questions is very important to help us understand. I want you to think about something. Let's say your mom comes home and she says, put on some clothes, we're going out. And you get so excited. But then you think you don't know what to wear. You need to ask mom a question so that you can understand what clothes you need to put on. If you were going to the beach, you wouldn't wear that same outfit to a party or to a wedding. So what question could you ask mom to help you understand what clothes you should put on? That's right, you need to either ask mom, where are we going or what should I put on? If mom says we're going to the beach, then we know to grab our flip flops and our bathing suit and our towel and we're gonna to go to the beach. But if she says we're going to a party, then we know to put on our best party clothes. So asking questions help us understand. Well, that works the same with reading, boys and girls. Good readers ask questions. Good readers ask questions before, during, and after they're reading a text. Remember, asking questions helps you understand. So you're probably asking me a question right now. Miss Austin, what questions should I ask? I like to call these our five W plus H. You're going to ask who, that tells us who the character is, what, what things are action or happening in the story, where, tell us where the characters are, where the story takes place, when, tell us a time that something happened, and why gives us the purpose or the reason. And also the letter H stands for how, which means by what means something happened. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how asking a question helps you understand a text. I'm going to read to you the story, Giggle Giggle Quack. This is one of my favorite stories. The author is Doreen Corrin. And remember, the author tells us, or the author writes the story. The pictures are by Betsy Lewin, and that's the person who draws the pictures. Let's begin. So remember, I told you that good readers ask questions before they read. So when I look at this text, I have a question. Giggle, giggle, quack. That sounds like laughter, and I know that a duck says quack. I wonder what he's laughing about. Also, when I see this picture, I see the duck, he has a pencil and a piece of paper. What is he doing with that? We'll find out as we read. So we'll ask questions 
before, during, and after our text. Let's read. Farmer Brown was going on vacation. He left his brother Bob in charge of the animals. Okay. I wrote everything down for you. Just follow my instructions. Everything will be fine. But keep an eye on Duck. He's trouble. Hmm. I have a question. Why does Farmer Brown say to keep an eye on Duck? And why does he say he's trouble? What does, what does Duck do? Okay, let's keep reading. Farmer Brown thought he heard giggles and snickers as he drove away, but he couldn't be sure. Bob gave Duck a long stare and went inside. He read the first note. Tuesday night is pizza night, not the frozen kind. The hens prefer anchovies. Giggle, giggle, cluck. Hmm, I have another question. Why would Farmer Brown leave a note for the hens to eat pizza? That's not what hens eat. But look here, I see Duck. There he is again with that pencil and a piece of paper. What is he doing? Hmm, we'll keep reading to find out. 29 minutes later, there was a hot pizza in the barn. There you see the, the farm animals eating their pizza. I wonder how they got it. Hmm, look at the picture. Who is that person? That's right, that's the pizza delivery guy. So you see, asking questions, we can get our answers from the text as well as the pictures. Bob checked on the animals before he went to bed. Everything was just fine. So all the animals are sleeping just like they're supposed to. Wednesday is bath day for the pigs. Wash them with my favorite bubble bath and dry them off with my good towels. Remember, they have very sensitive skin. Giggle, giggle, oink. There's that laughter again. Hmm, again, a strange note from Farmer, Bo from Farmer Brown, isn't it? Ducks, uh, pigs doesn't, don't take bubble bath and he left instructions for them to dry off with his good towels. Do you think Farmer Brown would do that? Hmm, I don't know. But here's our question again. Look at Duck. There he is again with that pencil and that paper. I wonder what he's doing. Let's keep reading to find out. Bob had all the pigs washed in no time. Hmm, where did he bathe them? In Farmer Brown's tub. Hmm, I wonder what that happened if Farmer Brown was there. Farmer Brown called home on Wednesday night to check in. Did you feed the animals like I wrote in the note, he asked. Done, replied Bob, counting seven empty pizza boxes. And look, there's Duck with that pencil again. I'm starting to think I understand Farmer Brown's message about watch Duck. Why is he, we, every time we see Duck, he has a pencil. What is he doing? Did you see my note about the pigs? All taken care of, said Bob proudly. Are you keeping a very close eye on Duck, he asked. Bob gave Duck a good long stare. Duck was too busy sharpening his pencil to notice. Mmm, I think I'm starting to understand why Duck has, has that pencil. But let's keep reading to check. Just keep him in the house, ordered, ordered Farmer Brown. He's a bad influence on the cows. Giggle, giggle, moo, giggle, oink, giggle, quack. There are those animals laughing again. Farmer Brown this time says that duck is a bad influence on cows. Influence means that somebody affects your behavior. Either they can make you do something good or they can make you do something bad. But here Farmer Brown says that duck is a bad influence on the cows. I wonder how duck is a bad influence on the cows. Hmm, let's keep reading. Thursday night, it's movie night. It's the cows turn to pick. Wow, there goes another strange note from Farmer Brown. Cows watching movies? Hmm, giggle, giggle, moo, 
Now the cows are laughing. Bob was in the kitchen popping corn just as the animals settled in to watch the sound of music. The phone rang. Who could be on the phone? I think I know. Let's check to see if we're right. Did you guess Farmer Brown? I did too. The only thing Farmer Brown heard on the phone on the other end was giggle, giggle, quack, giggle, moo, giggle, oink. Uh-oh. Duck, screamed Farmer Brown. How is Farmer Brown feeling? That's right. He sounds like he's upset. He hears all the animals inside the house. Let's see what happens. Duck says, it's for you, Bob. I love that story. Boys and girls, I hope you see how asking questions help us understand the text. Before we read, we asked the question, why was Duck holding a pencil and a piece of paper? Throughout the story, remember, Farmer Brown left strange notes for animals to eat pizza and take a bath in his, in his take a bubble bath with his favorite towels to watch movies. Those aren't notes that I think Farmer Brown would, would write. I think Duck wrote those now, notes, which explains why he has the pencil and the piece of paper. Throughout the story, we kept asking, why does Farmer Brown keep saying that Duck is trouble? Duck is a bad influence. Well, now we know Duck actions disrupted the whole farm. Those aren't things Farmer Brown would have his animals doing. So Duck is trouble. And then we also ask, how is Duck a bad influence? And remember I told you that influence means someone can get you to do a certain behavior. They get you to change your behavior. How did Duck influence the cows? Did he influence the cows? Yes, he did. What did he get the cows to do? He got them to come in and watch movies. Would the cows have done that had Farmer Brown been there? I don't think so. So asking questions throughout the story help us to understand Farmer Brown's description of Duck. Also, I told you that good readers ask questions after they read. So now I'm wondering, since Farmer Brown know what all the animals were up to, what will Farmer, do, Farmer Brown do when he gets home? Look at this picture. Look at Farmer Brown. What do you think Farmer Brown would do when he gets home? I challenge you to write an ending to the story. You tell what, you write an ending for what Farmer Brown will do when he get home. I'm sure it's gonna be a great ending. So again, asking questions are very important when we're reading a text. It helps us to understand what we're reading. Also, if you notice, while we were reading, we checked, our, we checked for our answers in the text. I always tell my students, reading is my favorite subject. Why? It gives you all the answers. So when you're taking a test or your teacher is asking you a question, refer back to your story. I challenge you this week, you have some passages in your packet and your teachers may have some passages on Google Classroom. As you're reading, ask questions before you read. Look at the title. If it has pictures, look at the pictures. Start thinking about what is the text about. As you're reading, Ask yourself questions to check for understand. Ask those who, what, when, where, and why questions. And after, you're, after you read a text, also ask questions that may have, they didn't come up with the ending or questions you may have about something that you, you, you read in the story. Again, asking questions help us understand. I will see you guys on Thursday. Again, we will continue working with Magic E and asking and answering questions. Next week, we will look at a text and ask specific questions to help us understand. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye, boys and girls.